what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that I don't believe most people even know exists at this point. And that is the brand new Old Knife Heron L1. Now I have never had the opportunity to review an O Knife. For those that don't know who O Knife is, O Knife is the knife segment of Olight. Not only have they expanded from making flashlights into making knives, but they're going to be offering a lot of different products. They have a new website called obuy.com, O-B-U-Y.com. And I don't know why they have a toucan to represent a heron. For those that don't know what a heron is, I'll put a picture up somewhere on the screen so that you have an opportunity to see what a heron actually looks like. All right, now what we're going to be looking at here is a somewhat compact, yet feels like full size, Warncliffe in a flipper variation. Now you can choose to flip it with the flipper tab, or you can do the old reverse flick off of the large and quite comfortable blade window that they have set up on here. There is also a fuller that goes from the blade window all the way off the edge of the blade. So, for those of you that always look for multiple methods of deployment, this knife should make you quite happy. Now, here's the thing. It looks really, really beefy and thick and all that kind of stuff. So, you're looking at it going, that thing has got to weigh a ton. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't. It is extraordinarily lightweight for the size that it is. Because your overall size is 8.38 inches from the tip to the butt. And no, guys, it, it doesn't uh, measure out any bigger if you measure it from underneath. Just thought I'd, I'd put that out there. Um, anyway, uh, so <laughs> you're looking at a knife that feels very robust, that looks very robust, but doesn't come with the trappings of being a heavy knife that most robust folders do. As an example, let's put this side by side with a couple of other worn cliffs. This is uh, my Grant Gripper, one of my favorite worn cliff knives. And you'll see that the length is uh, only a little bit shorter they're relatively the same size in their overall presence, but the O-knife is much, much taller and feels quite a bit more substantial. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, some of you may be aware that I am about to release my Hellfire with Best Tech Knives. Now, what I've chosen to do is, is go completely in the opposite direction. I wanted it to be overdone and obnoxious and crazy, so I'm making that very, 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 very large. There is going to be a smaller, shorter blade version, uh, but uh, this is meant to be a massive physical presence, and that's quite a bit different than the, uh, the O-Knife. Now, this obviously is substantially heavier in weight as well, even though I've got carbon fiber panels and stuff in there. But it's a titanium frame lock, so it's a lot heavier than this. So what you're getting here, let's go through some of the materials before I get to the TLDW. The TLDW is the section that I, I, I call it that because 
there are people that for some reason over the years make comments all the time. Oh, I can't believe he talked about a knife for 20 minutes. Dude, you, you came here for a review and you wanted to hear about the knife. Why would you not want to hear everything? So too long, didn't watch. I'll be getting into that in just a moment. But the materials here really are the beauty of this knife along with its price. And I'll be discussing that in a few moments. You're looking at an all G10 handle with an inset tab lock. So what you would normally expect to see as full length steel liners or titanium liners, this does not have full length liners to make the lock. Instead, it's an inset tab lock fitted right inside of there. And you can kind of see it in there a little bit. It would make life a little bit easier if, uh, if I used a flashlight and showed you, but I don't have one within reach. Funny enough, because I'm reviewing a knife made by a company that makes flashlights. So, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to pause here for a second and grab one of my flashlights because I do want to make it easier. Okay, and now I'm back with a flashlight. So let's take a look inside of here, and you should be able to see right in there. And right there, if you look right there when I shine the light back in, you'll see where that lock disappears into that G10 frame instead of being a full liner going all the way down the length of the frame and there is nothing on the other side. So what you're dealing with here is the lightweightness of a G10 handle and it's actually really, really rigid. I really can't even flex this. So it feels good, feels lightweight, and the texturing they've chosen to do here is almost like uh, texturing on the grip of a firearm. So you've got a really nice texture here that's not really going to tear up your hands or tear up your pockets. It's not that grabby, but when you apply a little bit of pressure to it, it feels like you're really, really locked in. Okay, uh, the blade material is D2 with a black titanium coating. Now, that's what they're talking about. Their, uh, their advertising says black titanium coating. It's, it's hard for me to tell if it's actually just a, uh, like a ceramic nano coating. I don't know how thick the coating is, but it looks really attractive. It's a very, very pitch black, a deep, dark black. There's no gray tones to it. It doesn't have an inconsistency where it's really, really black here, and then it gets a little splotchy or it loses a little bit of that, that depth of blackness somewhere else in the blade. The whole thing is really, really black. You ain't black. They've also done a really nice job on the uh, compound grind here. So it's not just a multi-stage or duplex grind where you have a grind and then another grind. They are actually doing a true hollow grind at the rearward portion of the blade and the tip to give it some strength is going to be in a flat grind. Now, while that's going to be good for the tip strength, there's one thing that you want to keep in mind when you see a compound grind done like this. When I'm making my knives with a compound grind, I typically do a reverse compound. So I would do it in, in the, so that you see how the flat grind is a little bit lower here and the hollow grind is taller. So it's going from a thinner grind to a thicker grind to beef up that tip, which is going to be good for most people. The problem is when you're slicing through something, this can be a little bit of a speed bump. So when I'm grinding my knives, I do it in a reverse. So I've got the shorter grind back here that's a little bit more obtuse and then the taller grind up front so that the blade literally drops down instead of has to pick up at that spot. And a good example of that was when, um, when we did this Hellfire prototype, I wanted them to mimic how I do mine. So it literally drops down from a, a thicker bevel to a thinner bevel. So as you're slicing through something, you don't have that little speed bump. Now, that's not anything that I'm going to use to knock this knife because 
this really is a standard way of doing a compound grind. You could spend $3,000 buying a Kirby Lambert custom folder and on, on his compound grinds, he does it the same way. It could be any number of makers, high-end custom knives, high-end production knives will do it in this way. So it's not a bad thing. It's just you need to be aware why the bevels are staggered in the way that they are on a particular design and what their pros and cons are for that. All right, let's get to the TLDW, shall we? All right, too long, didn't watch. What this basically is, is the pros and cons section that I do for every knife now. This is my, uh, my new format. All right, so we'll start things off as always with the pros. Pro number one is I really like this chunky, beefy design. It feels substantial in the hand. I think also because it's all blacked out for this particular example, I, I feel that it looks really, really good in this design. So visually, I am attracted to this knife from the word go. I think it's a good looking knife. Yes, it's very straight bodied. There's, you know, I like to have a little bit of contouring, uh, a little bit of character built into the lines of the knife typically. But with a Warncliffe, and I said this back when I did my original Grant Gripper video, on a Warncliffe, a very straight bodied knife actually lends itself well to matching up with the style of blade that you've got there. So it doesn't bother me at all that it's very straight and blocky. And it actually feels pretty good in the hand as well. You do notice the clip, but we'll talk about that in the con section. And it's not even a major con. But for somebody like me who has large to extra large hands, this is going to fill up your hand because of the height. So the ergonomics for somebody with larger hands is fantastic. Another thing that I like is the pivot collar here. You've got a little splash of color on an otherwise all blacked out knife. I would have preferred to have seen a black pivot. I think it would have gone with the theme a little bit better. As it stands right now, you have one satin finished piece of hardware on an otherwise 100% black knife. So I'm not sure where the design choice was there, but I do like having that blue pivot collar, which I'm not entirely certain how they made this because I haven't taken the pivot out to take a look, but uh, I, I did notice that on the back side, on the tooled part of the pivot, it is also blue anodized as well. Let's see, what else do I find as a plus? I'm really glad that this is a liner lock because that means lefties are also going to be able to very easily own, carry, flip, and manipulate this knife because you're not applying any pressure to the lock bar anywhere like you would on a frame lock. It's going to be easy for everybody to be able to use. Another pro is a really nice snappy action. Good detent, not super hard. You, if you really rest your finger on it, you can get it to fail. Uh, but that's not what you're doing. You're pulling out a knife with the intent of using it. You're going to consciously flip it. So I like the action, and it's very smooth, very fast. Feels wonderful. And another pro for me is the fact that it does have that compound grind. It gives the knife more character. It does make it feel a bit more special, especially in this price range. And that's where I have to go next. Another major pro for this knife is going to be the price. If you're buying it from obuy.com, the regular price is going to be $64.99. That's going to be the everyday price. However, when this drops... On April 16th, it's going to last from the 16th to the 22nd, they're taking an additional 20% off. So that's pretty friggin' awesome. So you're going to get this for a killer price. It's going to be one of the least expensive knives that you own, if you're one of my typical viewers. If you're just stumbling on here and you normally only buy cheap knives, 
this may not be the least expensive knife that you that you ever buy, but most of the people in the community that are watching my videos are generally here for fairly expensive exclusive knives and routinely will spend five hundred to five thousand dollars per knife. So this will end up being one of the least expensive knives that you're going to have in your collection. And I don't feel that it feels cheap. Yes, it's lightweight, but it doesn't have a cheap feel to it because everything seems to be executed very, very well. I wasn't an enormous fan of this when I first saw it, especially when I saw it on the packaging. Number one, they're, they're packaging their knives like they package their flashlights like a very utilitarian tool. It's very, I don't know, it's very retail consumer. It's got so much writing on it and, and a picture of it on the box. that it, it feels like it's going to be really cheap. However, it's not. It seems to be made very, very well. Am I going to tell you that this is going to outperform every other knife that you're looking at today online? No. However, I think at the price point that they're shooting for, this is probably going to be one of the best and most uniquely designed choices that you're going to come across. And for that, I really, really dig it. Now let's get to the cons. Are there any real cons to this knife? I don't really have a sense for any major issues with this knife from the time that I've had it and played with it. I've had this for about two weeks, and uh, it's only gone in the pocket once just because I just released my knives, my Kaladins, so I've been carrying a Kaladin pretty much every single day, and uh, so this didn't quite get that fair shake, so it didn't get carried for day after day after day. I will tell you the pocket clip works pretty well. It will go in over a jeans pocket fairly easily. The retention is pretty good. I don't like the fact that it's deep carry, but that's a personal qualm with me. A lot of people want deep carry clips. If you're a deep carry pocket clip kind of dude, then you're probably going to appreciate this. I just don't like how deep carry pocket clips carry the knife. I don't want it that far in my pocket. But there is a little, I'm not going to say it's a hot spot because it's not. You will feel the pocket clip because of this point here. In this point here, you're going to know that it's there, but it's not really cumbersome. I haven't felt any issues where I'm like, oh man, that's, that's super annoying. I don't get that. And if I give it a good squeeze, you see there's no imprint or a yellow outline of a clip in my hand. Whereas you see that here from just gripping the frame. So definitely no hot spot there in my hand. I suppose if you're, if you're going to call it a con, some people are going to call the fact that it's D2 a con. However, the biggest downs, there, there are two downsides to D2 in popular theory. I'm not saying they're downsides for me because I know how to take care of my stuff. But when people go out there and, and pontificate about all these different types of steels and the positives and negatives. A lot of people will talk about the fact that D2 can rust and corrode very easily, which is very true. And they feel that the, the carbide structure is so large that you cannot get a good fine edge out of it. And that's true sometimes, not always. I have had some D2 knives that it took a very, very fine, keen, sharp edge. Um, as far as rusting and corroding, this is a coated blade. Even if it was just Cerakote, any coating over it is going to prevent that. All you want to do is when you're done cutting with it, because remember, your, your secondary bevel, your cutting edge, is exposed. It's not coated at all. So you would probably want to have a little bit of oil or Aegis EDCI or whatever it is that you use to prevent rust and corrosion on your blades, you probably want to wipe that edge down every now and then. Because with that being exposed, if something was were going to rust, that would be it. But the rest of the blade in its entirety is all coated. So that's really it for the cons. 
And they're not really major cons. I'll give you, you know what, I'm going to give you one more. This forward choil up here is too small to be a finger choil. And it's so large that I don't see it being practical as a sharpening choil. And they do, by the way, bring the plunges in very, very quickly. So you should have a little bit of sharpening life here before you have to worry about making smileys at the heel of the edge. But this is far too small to be a finger choil. You choke up in there and you're going to end up cutting yourself on the heel of the edge. And that's really not any fun. So that's really it for any cons that I might have for it. So overwhelmingly for me, this is a positive review. I think it's a really nicely made knife for the price. It's not the type of knife that I gravitate toward because I would want this to be all titanium. Or if it's going to be a composite material, I would prefer it to be carbon fiber myself. Um, I just don't have any particular love for G10. I don't hate G10. Uh, quite the opposite. I th think G10 is a great material. I just don't find it to be particularly attractive. So I generally gravitate toward if I'm going to have a material like this instead of titanium. I would rather have carbon fiber. But in this price range, I'm not sure that that's even possible. All right, let's get to the specs. Before I lay it out and put the specs on the screen, let's weigh it and get a good sense for the weight. Because I've been harping on this a lot, the fact that it's lightweight and easy to carry, 5.4 ounces. Now, realizing again, it's just under 9 inches in overall length. So 5.4 ounces is lightweight for that size. This is not a teeny tiny little EDC knife. It's not a small Sebenza. So, you know, if you're going, oh, but it's over three and a half ounces. I don't carry anything over three and a half ounces. Then you wouldn't have been looking at a knife this large to begin with. Give you a comparison. Yeah, that's 10.8 ounces. And even the Grant Gripper is 5.6 ounces. So this is actually not a huge difference between the two. And I can feel that now when I have them both in my hand. So your difference from 5.6 to 5.4 is almost negligible. But they, 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 this certainly could have been a much heavier knife had they chosen to, to make it in almost any other way. Let's get that over to the side and talk about them specs. What you're getting here is a liner lock Warncliffe with an overall length of 8.38 inches. Blade length of 3.67 inches. It is quite a lengthy blade. It looks smaller than it really is. Your blade height is 1.65 inches. And your blade thickness, your actual blade stock here, is going to be 130 thousandths thick. So it's fairly slim blade stock but not to the point where it feels wimpy or fragile in any way. But if they would have gone much thicker, like 150, 145, you would have probably added another ounce or more to the overall weight. And they did want this to be an easily pocketable EDC knife. You could tell that from all the other decisions that they made. Handle length is 4.72 inches. And the handle height is 1.55 inches. So again, it is substantial on paper. It is substantial in its measurements. It feels substantial in the hand the way that your hand grips it. But it doesn't feel substantial with the weight. Who do I think this knife is for? I think this knife is for somebody who wants a good, hard user that wants something fairly unique by having that compound ground Warncliffe blade and is price conscious. You may or may not own more expensive knives. I could see somebody very easily gravitating toward this because it's very sleek looking, it's very menacing, and it's all blackness. And the texture and everything on it really adds to kind of a tactical look. 
I dig that. I think it looks pretty handsome. And I, I honestly, I don't even mind the billboarding. Yes, the logo is still a little bit big for my taste on the blade, but it's not crazy and obnoxious. Those who know me well know that I appreciate a nice, aggressively designed Warncliffe. This is my tibia that I did in collaboration with Riat a few years ago. And those are going to make great carry companions, nice matched companions for the day. This is a standard black wash, so it's like a, uh, a black PVD a, uh, and then stone washed. So you see it's not as pitch black as this. That's what I was saying. This is such a wonderfully deep black. It's like a deep black paint job. And I dig that. I think that looks really, really handsome. So I think these two will make uh, great carry companions. I'll have some fun with that in the future. Woo! Yeah. Could use a, a little, an extra serration on the jimping. One more, just a little bit higher because my finger kind of flew off a second ago and I got kind of like a, uh, a half flip out of it. So yeah, it is possible to, to fail it, but it's not very likely. And for most people, you're probably going to end up flicking it. You can roll it with your thumb. You can, can you thumb flick it? Yeah. And then the reverse flick is very satisfying on this size of a blade. It really feels good to do it in that manner. Now, because you do have bearings, and uh, there's a ceramic detent in here as well, so I'm going to assume that the bearings are ceramic. Um, because it is a bearing pivot, that blade is going to drop quite freely. And over time, as this breaks in, I would expect it to drop even more freely. So definitely get your thumb out of the way before you go dropping that thing down. Because, um, yeah, it could, it could really do a number on your thumbnail. That's for damn sure. They did a nice job on the edge. Feels good. I think it's perfectly acceptable for pretty much any kind of cutting task. And uh, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget that the 20% 20 20 off sale is only going to be running uh, from, the, from April 16th to April 22nd. There is a coupon code that you're able to use. And uh, hopefully I remembered to put it up on the screen at some point during this video. I probably didn't because I tend to forget things a lot lately. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But uh, let's hope that I remembered. Yeah. Future self, as you're editing this video, this is your cue to put a coupon code up on the screen. And if I did somehow forget, it's down in the description below. Anyway, that was my thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you, as always, for subscribing and liking the video. And I'll see you on the next video.